Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. Today we're going to combine steel and wood and we're going to make a sign with one machine, a Shop Saber Sidekick. This is a really unique project. Let's get started. The Sidekick was designed as a performance plasma machine, but we've also added the ability to do CNC routing on it. Now here's why we can do that. We start with a welded steel base frame. That gives us the ability to handle the steel plates involved in plasma work. And we also put a steel gantry on here because that helps us handle the heat involved with plasma. Well, the steel gantry gives us tremendous rigidity that's required for CNC routing. We use precision contour guide rails in X, Y, and Z axis. We use inverted rack and pinion in X and Y. We drive those with planetary drives and North American source servo motors. This gives us increased accuracy, acceleration, and cut quality. The standard configuration for these machines is a ball screw in the Z axis and our breakaway torch mount. This machine actually has our optional collision detection torch. Later, we'll take that head off and we'll replace it with an HSD router spindle for our wood applications. Sidekicks come standard with the blow through table. We also offer a downdraft table option. This machine actually has our most popular table configuration and that's a water table. It's all welded and it's laterally supported. And the green tint that you see in the water is actually our plasma defense solution. Later, we'll actually put a router table on here with T-slots to help configure parts so we can actually use the CNC router. One of the most important parts of any CNC machine is the control itself. We find that most of our customers with no CNC experience are able to make their first part within a couple hours of having the machine installed. Now that's because we developed a machine control system that's really, really user friendly. Now there's a couple options on the control system. We offer a stand on wheels and we also offer a machine mounted control. Now that you know a little bit more about the machine, let's go inside and open up the software and create our actual sign. I selected this particular sign project because it let me use plasma and routing on the same project so I can do it with our Sidekick combination machine. So let's take a look at what the product actually is going to be. If you look on the screen here, you see a sign and it says Shop Saber. And it's, uh, to give you an idea of size, it's about four feet this way. And, and really what, it's two pieces. So let's, let's first, let's just hide this. So what we're first going to cut is this, so, and this material, by the way, is going to be steel plate. It's, it's 10 gauge, so it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Now keep in mind, this can be anything plasma cut. So that could be steel, stainless steel, aluminum, copper, that kind of stuff. So you can kind of make this fit whatever material you want. In our case, we would probably powder coat that or paint it one or the other. All right, then what's behind it, what you actually see is wood. So that's the router project. So let's go ahead and hide that. And what you see is a piece of wood. And in our case, it's one inch thick Baltic birch. And you see the letters sticking up. And they're going to stick up about three eighths of an inch. So when you put the mask or the metal plate over there, those are going to stick out about a quarter inch. So, so that's really what we want to do is we want to make a sign based on that. This is a great project for a sidekick combination machine. I created this model in Rhino, and I did that for visualization purposes so you could kind of get a concept of what we're trying to do here, but I'm not going to toolpath it there. I'm going to toolpath it with VCAR Pro. So how do I go from this to that? Well, I just need some lines. I need, I need the outside lines for this, and I've already got them on another layer. So let's just open this up. So we're going to turn on that and then we've got, we'll turn these off. And what that should leave is a geometry. So that's what I need. So I just need to export this as a DXF, uh, and then I'll bring that into VCAR Pro. Now we're looking at VCAR Pro, and I've actually brought that DXF in, so that's what it looks like. Once again, that's the geometry I really need, but that's not how I'm gonna orient it on the table. So let's look back a little bit. Here's how it's gonna be set up on the machine. So think about this as the, the work table on the machine, and then here's your geometry that we looked at. And the first thing we're going to do is actually uh, probably do the plasma part. So I'm going to create another drawing uh, with a little bit of modification, and let's take a look at that. 
we're going to need a little bit of clearance so that when we put that mass down onto that core part, there's clearance. And so basically I took all of this geometry that I'm going to use on the plasma and offset it so that I make those cutouts a little bit larger. Now you got to realize plasma is not as accurate as CNC routing, so we had to comp accommodate that. The other part is I wanted, I moved these small pieces out here that were inside of these letters into this area because they could cause a problem in here and I thought it would just make it easier to cut like that. Now, so that's how it's set up on the plasma machine. Tool pathing for a plasma is not really different than anything else. You just think of it as a small tool. So when you're, when you're cutting through this material, first off, there's no Z. It's either on or off, so it, it cuts all the way through. We typically start out in some scrap area, burn through, and then follow the geometry. In our case, with this set of cutting applications, the diameter of that flame is about a sixteenth of an inch, so it's really not any different than cutting something out with a sixteenth inch tool. Let's take a look at this. Let's go to simulation, you can kind of get an idea of what's going to happen. So the machine's just going to follow that, and now as it goes through there, that's burning all the way through. And we get rid of the scrap material, and we'll get rid of that. Zoom in here a little bit, get rid of that. And this final letter E, let's get that. All right, that's what we're going to have. So we're going to have this cut out, and we're going to have these pieces that go inside here. Now let's talk about something else that right now, and that is um, what we're using on our application here is actually VCAR Pro, and that's because we're doing routing in plasma. Uh, there, if you're going to do more plasma, there's another software option from Enroute called Enroute Fabrication that might make more sense if you're going to do a lot of plasma. And, and the reason is this. Uh, the setup is very, very similar, but it takes fewer clicks to get to the program. So that's why I say if you're going to use uh, a, the plasma a lot, I probably would get this in route version of the software, it just makes this part easier. Now let's send this program out to the machine and let's go out and cut this part. Our plasma part came out really nice, so the next step is to switch the machine over for routing. And if you want more information on that, there's a video on our YouTube channel that shows step by step how that's done. Okay, now let's take a look at how we actually set this machine up for CNC routing. Now let's talk about how we actually do the setup on the machine. Well, what you see here, of course, is a perimeter of the table. That would be this line, and then this is the blank, and then this is where the final sign is going to be. Well, I can't really just put that on the table because when I cut the sign out on the outside, it's going to cut the table and that's not going to be good. So it's a T-slot table, so I'm going to get a piece of panel material and clamp it down on there. And then I'm going to actually tape this blank onto there and cut the part. And so once I get to that point, one of the questions is, well, how do I know where to put the blank on the table? And here's how I do it. I start out first and I create a tool path. I usually call it setup to tell you the truth. and this is what it's going to do. 
it's basically going around where the outline of the finished part is. That way, if I have wood that covers that, I know I'm going to get a good part, and we'll simulate that. So that's what's going to happen. It's going to cut in there about 30 thousandths. All I need is just a line to put in there so I know where, where I take the part on. So that's the first step. We're going to use two router bits to actually do the machining. Both are going to be down here. One's a half inch diameter, the other's an eighth. And we can't do it all with a half inch because there's too much detail in it. So I've actually added a piece of geometry on the outside here, and there's a reason. This is really a pocket. So I want the software to tool path out here and leave those letters sticking up. If I didn't have that outside to, to project, the software would think those are holes and it would just cut them out as individual pockets. So first thing I actually did was this. I created that. And if you look real close, you can actually see now what I'm showing you in VCAR Pro is this is there's your tool pass if you show where it cuts out, it's a little easier. But you see what happens. It cleans all this out, but when you get into this area right here, that half inch bit won't fit into there. So, but VCAR Pro takes care of that, so it says, let us use a second bit. So the second bit is going to be this one. And so the eighth inch bit's gonna clean that out. When you put those two together, we got that. So that's what we're gonna do. Those are the two tool paths that we're gonna use. And then once we're done with that, then we're gonna cut the outside. Now, what I would do, so I don't have to change tools, is I would probably take this tool, or this operator, and move it up. And now here's why. This and this are done with the same tool. So I can do those two operations as a single program, and I do this operation by itself after I do a tool change. Now let's look at simulation, and you kind of get an idea of what's going to happen. So here's the first pocket. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and cut the outside out just to make it easier for tool change. We get rid of the scraps, so that's what we've got. And then finally, we're going to bring that small tool in and clean it on out. That's all the tool pathing that's required. Now let's go out in the shop and make this part.
Our steel and wood sign came out really good. It's amazing what you can do with one of these sidekick combination machines. If you enjoyed the video, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.